Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening and welcome to the Tuesday, September 6, 2022 school committee meeting located here at Kingsboro High School in the PGC room. My name is Anthony Tinarelli. I officially call this meeting to order and we will start with introductions to my left. Height name Marino, student representative. Jeff Bowe. Dustin Puma. Michael Woodlock, assistant superintendent. Hi, Mike Flanagan, superintendent. Ryan McMahon. Daniela Thanis. Rob Mullen. Joe Messina, school business administrator. Thank you. And if you could all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. At this time, I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the August 23rd, 2022 school committee minutes, as well as the August 23rd, 2022 superintendent evaluation subcommittee minutes. I'll make that motion. I'll second. Or you can second. Danielle will second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? That carries 600. Citizen time? Seeing none. Um, correspondence. None of this time, Mr. Chair. Personnel. Would you like me to handle that, or you got uh, that? Whatever you like. All right, Ed. All right. So uh, we do uh, some notifications. We have a notification of resignation from Sarah McCarty, uh, TES power professional. We have a notification of intent to retire, Miss Elizabeth Gill, TES administrative assistant for over 23 years. Miss Gill's preliminary uh, retirement date is in December. And that's all we have for personnel. Excellent. Thank you. Share the success. Yep. So uh, at TES, the principals, teachers, and all of the staff are excited to have students back and bring life to the school. Uh, Mrs. Cabin, I would like to give a huge great shout out to the amazing educators for creating warm, welcoming, and engaging classrooms to support their learners. Students are quickly learning routines while teachers are focusing on building strong connections. Uh, the excitement and energy was felt throughout the building last week. The elementary school will host their annual preschool through grade five open house on Thursday, September 29th. Um, also, everyone is confident that 2022 through 2023 will be a great year. Uh, at the middle school, students and teachers got into the swing of things with a number of welcoming activities in the start of the academic year. Um, they had three grade level meetings to go over the expectations for the school year and their advisory program has started each day uh, with great connections being made. Um, arrival and dismissal have started off great with no issues. The lunchroom is back to offering a number of options for students. Um, and everyone at TMS is very happy with the more typical start uh, to the school year. Um, uh, THS would like to welcome everyone back and wish all, uh, all a great year. Um, you'll hear more about the high school later on in the meeting tonight. Um, and all the principals are very happy with the first week and are very excited for a great school year. Awesome. Thank you, sir. Mm-hmm. Subcommittee update? Looks like we don't have any. We have none. All right. Unfinished business. So, Mr. Chair, we'll jump right into the slide deck for this evening. I'm looking at the screen behind you. I think, I think they feel like I'm looking right there. I'm looking behind you. <laughs> <laughs> That's when I know it's up there. Yes. So, uh, we'll, we'll go to the first slide. Um, you know, it was great. It was great uh, last week on, on Monday to have. Uh, all the teachers back in the district and it was a great opportunity for us to share our true north statement with with the teachers in the district um we talked a lot about this uh, on august at our august 23rd meeting um but you know as i think about and reflect about our strategy for district improvement and where we're going as a district and our focus on teaching and learning you know if we come back to that true north statement we value all people in our school community and are committed to continuous growth. That's what Tingsboro is about, and that was my message to the staff. This community is known for caring for its people first and then working to get better. So as long as we keep all TPS stakeholders central to what we do and the decisions we make, everything else is going to work out fine. It's about the people first. Um, so that was the message that we, we tried to share with the staff, and, and really that's <clears throat> indicative of the information that we received and, and the survey response we received and the input we received from all stakeholders in our community. So we, we, we led the day with our True North statement and it's something that I would just like to keep reminding this committee of every meeting that we talk about, you know, the work that, that you as a committee do, everything that we do as, as a school central administration 
is for the people in our community, whether it's the students, whether it's the teacher, whether it's the staff. Um, we need to take care of them, make sure we're all pulling the rope in the same direction, and everyone has the resources they need to be successful. People first. That's our mantra. So that is our true north statement, and we'll, we'll continue to come back to that. You will see that time and time again. First thing we'll talk about is the TMS building project, up, project update. And I would encourage Mr. Woodlock, Mr. Messina, certainly you, uh, Mr. Mr. Tenerella, to jump in at any point, uh, as I was not at the meeting. But basically for the community, and it's very difficult, it's very difficult to capture all the information in that meeting and summarize it here because of the level of detail and information they put into that. So I'm grabbing some highlights, just high level to share with the community right now. Basically what happened was another estimate was performed, one of several that will continue to come along the way. And this current estimate is tracking the project to be approximately $5 million over budget. Now that's not something we're gonna hit a panic button on, knowing that we also have $13 million worth of contingency money built into the project. This estimate right now reflects the current trend in the building market and the estimators at this time frankly are sick of getting burned and they're sick of using traditional numbers so they're inflating their numbers because they've been burned over the past year when we heard it's going to level it's going to level the construction market and it hasn't so right now this point in time it's trending to five million dollars over um, that being said left field jcj and fontaine brothers got together and they, they created a list of value engineering where can we reduce square footage volume uh, different fixtures, those types of things. And they came up with a plan to show that we could address this, I won't say easily, but handily. We, we could definitely address the $5 million uh, overrun right now. Again, this is a snapshot in time. There'll be another estimate in three or four months when we get to um, the next phase of, of the, the project. But we need to show some sort of reconciliation right now so that we can submit a proposal to the MSBA so that it is approved so that we can then go out to bid to start securing materials so that we can build the middle school. That being said, three big pieces to discuss that came up through value engineering. One was the potential removal of the canopy between the two schools. That's about a $350,000 savings if we don't have that canopy. For the time being, if we pull that out to show the MSBA that we can balance the budget, we'll make that decision now. The school, school building committee did make that decision now, but that is also going to go in as an alternate to the project, meaning if the construction cost level, the canopy's coming back or potentially could come back if the school building committee makes that decision. Another decision that needed need to be made was about the uh, HVAC system of the school. There are two different, I am not an expert in this at all, but there are two different types of displacement systems versus a VRE system, uh, completely out of my wheelhouse. However, the system that the SBC voted to support is a savings of about $750,000. That being said, there will still be air conditioning and heating in the entire school. And it also increases uh, square footage in some of the classrooms, uh, some learning space, which is good. So that's a savings of $750,000. And the third item, which isn't even discussed yet because that would be part of phase two of value engineering, would be the softball field. That is an easy add-on at the end with contingency money potentially, given what it would take right now. You don't need to order steel to build a softball school field. That would be the last thing that is done. So we're hopeful that the experts are right, that the construction market will level, and that the contingency money will be there, and the, and the inflation that was built in to some of these estimates will settle. Um, how did I do? Was that about, was that about right? Yes. Did I miss any other points? So I would encourage everyone, um, <clears throat> beginning tomorrow, we, we will make all school building committee meetings available on the Tingsboro Public School webpage for you to watch. I know sometimes it's hard to find them on the, the town webpage, but uh, it, it's hard to do it justice because of the level of detail and information that these construction experts are providing. I would encourage people, take, take an hour a week if you want really to fine tune and dig into this information, to watch that meeting and really understand where we are in the process. So that's what I have for a school building committee update at this time. And you did a great job updating. Thank you. Thank the only you. thing that I would add is, is as each phase of the building gets built, there's certain materials that have to be pre-ordered mm. due to long lead times and that type of stuff. So as far as the canopy between the two schools, 
we will have the infrastructure in the cement to support that. However, the canopy itself, because of the steel and the cost of the steel today, we will not have. But if we wanted to add that later, the infrastructure will be there for us to put it in. Right. Um, the softball field, there we have not voted on taking that off the table yet. Right. However, there will be a field out there. It will be graded. It will be um, irrigated. irrigated. We'll have grass. It'll, the only thing we won't have is a cutout of an actual softball field if that's what we have to do at the time. But we've asked JCJ Left Field um, to come up with some time frames on when we need to make that final decision for each one of these and when we could put stuff back if need be. Right. So. And, that's, and that's the big part. We, we need approval now so that we can get the bid package to MSBA for approval and we can actually get it out to bid and start ordering materials. So this phase one value engineering, what was a critical step for the school building committee uh, last week? I don't know if Mr. Woodlock has anything or Mr. Messina. No, I think you guys did a great job in summing that up. Yep. Very good. Thank right. you, Dr. Flanagan. Great. Excellent. And that was both both A and B. So we can move on to new business. Oh, we do have to, we're going 8B teaching and learning, Mr. Chair. Oh, I thought you covered that in your first slide. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. So I'm going to turn over to Mr. Woodlock at this time and talk about teaching and learning where we are with uh, PD and SDI. Yeah, so uh, one of the things that we had made a commitment to leading up uh, throughout the summer is that we wanted to make sure that we held ourselves accountable to our SDI by making regular um, presentations here at school committee. And um, as part of that, our professional development definitely tied into that um, that we had today. We had a release day today due to voting. We had professional development in all the schools. And briefly, at the elementary school, we had outside vendors come in, Keys to Literacy, which was a grant secured uh, last spring. Uh, many of our teachers were working with that. We also had de-escalation training for uh, a few select staff as well as SEL training. At the middle school, we had a, a variety of, uh, of folks in there, including uh, some of our teachers that were working with Keys to Literacy in the sixth grade. Uh, but also we had Kit Golan from Leslie University uh, in working with all of our math teachers for a full day today. I sat in on some of that and it was really, uh, really effective professional development and a lot of teamwork uh, built in there. And um, the administration at the middle school also uh, ran PD for the remaining staff, uh, identifying key topics in education and allowing staff to meet, talk, read articles, listen to podcasts, watch videos, and have some really robust conversations about teaching and learning. They, uh, I guarantee you, teachers will tell you this, they don't get to do that enough. And so um, I think it was a great use of time. Here at the high school, Mr. Ogden, um, focused on something that's upcoming and I applaud him for getting ahead of this because I've been in uh, you know kind of the headlights of the train coming through the tunnel. Uh, NEASC accreditation is a few years off but uh, they've taken the initiative to get ahead of some of the things that need to happen for that and things that we need to be looking at so that when it does happen our staff isn't overwhelmed with trying to get a self-study report done in a year and it, it takes away from everything else. Uh, so by beginning to look at vision of the graduate here at the high school with the entire staff, uh, they're really getting ahead of the, the, the curve on that. And so I think that's going to benefit them, not only for the work that they did today, but down the road in being able to do more than just NEASC preparation. As far as teaching and learning, a lot of what we've been focusing on with the SDI uh, is, it comes from DESI, in which it really involves integrating multi-tiered systems of support for our students and for our staff. Um, what you see on the screen here is the blueprint that uh, Desi, it's probably hard for you to see there, but uh, the blueprint that Desi has shared with us that really kind of identifies how multi-tiered systems of support are, are supposed to work. In short, I'll briefly talk about it. There are several tiers, and we want to make sure that all of our students are getting tier one instruction. That means the regular classroom experience, we want all our students to have access to that. Uh, in the past, we haven't had the structures in place, um, and not saying here at Tingsboro, but across the board in education to make that possible for all students. Um, so what we want to make sure that we're doing, if students need additional supports, that could be like a tier two or tier three uh, support, depending on uh, the level of need that a student may have. We want to make sure that's not taking away from the tier one instruction. And that's one of the struggles that 
education has had in the past is when students need something else, they get removed from another course. And we want to make sure that's not happening. We want to make sure that all of our students have an equitable opportunity to be in all classrooms. Uh, so one thing that we typically say when we're talking about this, we want to supplement our services, not supplant our educational um, opportunities for students. We also want to make sure that we're talking about tiers are not places or people. We'll never say this is a tier one kid or a tier two kid. Every student is a tier one learner. Uh, secondly, we want to acknowledge within a multi-tier system of support that supports can be permanent. You know, they might need them throughout their high school career from K to 12, but they might also be temporary. So we don't want to lock a student into uh, supports that they eventually grow out of because they've gained the skills needed to work without it. Um, and we want to support uh, the drivers. And if you get a chance to look at this in detail, the drivers are what really allow us to allow teachers to provide tier one support and <coughs> tier one teaching to all students. We have to be supportive in what we do as a central office, as building administrators, to make sure that we are making those things possible. And those drivers could include things like professional development, they could include things like you know, allowing budget for the needs that we have in this realm, uh, but it also could, res you know, could pertain to things like, do we have an appropriate schedule? And so that's one of the things that our high school has been working on over the last couple of years is they've been, uh, they've had a scheduling committee, they've met, they've reflected on the, the schedule here at the high schools and trying to identify is it meeting the needs of our students and our staff. And, um, Mr. Ogden and Ms. Trainer are here tonight to talk a little bit about what that process has looked like. It's a really important aspect of creating opportunities for all students, um, what they're proposing uh, through the recommendations of the schedule committee. So first, where were you? What have you done? And kind of where are you going from here? All right, thank you, Mr. Woodlock. Um, so this actually began back in 2019 and we were simply just looking at our schedule at that time. It had been in place for probably close to 10 years, um, and it was time to see, is that still the best fit for us? Is it still meeting the needs of all our students? So uh, in doing so, Ms. Trainer oversaw our committee that was made up of 10 teachers, a counselor, and then herself, um, and they began by doing a lot of research to start. Um, they looked at schedules all across the area. They went out and uh, then visited schools of the ones that they thought were best, and was the best fit here um, and it didn't necessarily mean that just because it worked somewhere else it could work here we still want to make sure it worked for us and it was a fit for us so um, she and that committee went out and did a lot of work with that uh, what did come back is that the group the group of teachers felt as though they did like and would continue to like the trimester schedule they think it is the best fit for us but with a slight change of adding that wind block in there um, and adding that wind block speaks directly to what uh, Mr. Woodlock was just talking about, where it offers the opportunity for intervention and enrichment for students to make sure they are, all their needs are getting met. Our, our high learners are getting pushed. Um, our students that need that extra intervention are, are having the opportunity to receive that. Um, it also helps uh, many of our students that do receive services where they would no longer have to not choose an elective because of the limit, limits in their schedule. Um, the wind block would be stretched out across each day. It'd be built right in the schedule, so it does give a lot of opportunity for students to um, to work through that. And if you go to the next one, we do have a lot of work to do with it still, and um, we're going to put together another um, group of teachers and staff that are going to help establish some of these things. And as we as, as we further ourselves through it, um, because we want to make sure we do it right. We don't want to simply do it. We don't want it to turn into, say, a study hall. It's not what its intention is. Uh, it's really about making sure that we have the structure in place, which um, if you see that there is a schedule scheduling software that we'll um, need to make an initial investment on, and then also an annual one with that. Um, and there are a number of other things listed across that for um, that we'll have to make sure we have there with the goal of piloting it uh, during trimester three. So Mr. Chair, if I can just add a couple of points here. I think, uh, I think the amount of work that's been done has been extensive already. And, and I think the best part about the work that was done was it was, uh, it was <coughs> teachers and, and administration together really reflecting about the schedule. Um, I think it's important that we, that we have a sense of understanding 
at the school committee level that there is going to be a schedule change potentially coming down the pike, and that may impact budget, and that may impact budget development. And I think one of the best things that we, we, we pride ourselves on here in Tingsboro is we don't just pick the budget up and put it down every year. We look at what our strategy for district improvement says, and we make tough decisions based on where we're going. This could be another one of those tough decisions. I see a couple numbers in here, you know, $3,500, eight, $3, $800, little things like that that are recurring costs annually. Not a huge impact on the budget, but something that needs to be considered. I wonder what staffing changes might need to come out because of this schedule. I don't know, but I think the important part is the work, a lot of work has been done and that you're going to continue to work together, give voice and choice to students and teachers throughout this process and come back to this committee at some point again and say, here's what the new schedule will potentially look like. Just kind of a backward design. Kate, when do you actually start? Excuse me, Mr. Trainer, when do you actually start building a schedule? So when would decisions need to be made? Um, for, for next school year, it yes. would be around February, February and March, when we start our preliminary um, looking at kids' requests and all that to get, to get that working. So is it a fair assumption to say that a lot of work is going to happen between now and January because we start building a budget in January? Absolutely, yep. And, and obviously it's going to impact what the program of studies looks like, right? So we're going to have to refine the program of studies potentially. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's minor t tweaks, I don't know. And then in February, as you start building a schedule, we'll have a better sense of where the budget is. And this might be, there might be some decisions here that we're going to have to hold harmless. Because once we build that schedule, we can't go back and say, oh, no, we're going to change the budget line item here. Because they're already scheduling students in that. So it's going to be uh, some, it's timely the, the, how, when these decisions are made. So um, that's all I had to say about it. I don't know if the committee has any questions yeah. for them. I'll open up to the committee if you have any questions. What exactly is the Power School plugin? So we actually sat through, I sat through a training with the um, tech department um, last Thursday, and it was, um, it, it was pretty interesting. I really liked it. So what it is, that there is a plug into PowerSchool where it is to make that flex block, as, as what it's called. So it would be that wind block. So, and again, there's a lot of work that needs to go into it, but in theory it would be, let's say, so it's five, day, five days in the schedule. On say Monday students would meet with their mentor um, so a mentor would be the teacher that would have a small group of students so let's say 15 um, and they're gonna sit down and every Monday they're gonna meet with that teacher so that's to help build a relationship on that piece which is the advisory piece and then Tuesday through Friday that teacher would have access to this software and they'd also be able to see their attendance and they'd be able to see their grades to be able to help them schedule them schedule the students out for where they're going on Tuesday Wednesday Thursday and Friday so they um, have access to other teachers throughout the building during yes the time yep, yep. and they just make up a test or a quiz absolutely and the teachers have access Extra to pre-schedule the students so if you had a group of 15 students that you know that might need a little bit of uh, pre-teaching before you're doing a certain unit you could already pre-schedule that fit those 15 students so if I sat down with you you could you know I would say you know what Mrs. Puma already scheduled you for Tuesday, now Wednesday and Thursday, and they might say, well, I want to do so-and-so. Well, look at your math grade. You might need a little bit of extra help in math. Um, so they'll so be able to work together. So studying, putting the kids where they need to be for those other four days. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Whether it's math help or Spanish help or... Yep. And or if they have nothing scheduled, there'll be opportunities as well. Like if they, they're not pulled by someone, so if they the have choice are, in, in are saying doing fine and aren't in need of tier two interventions of some sort, they could be doing something that is a plug-in on PowerSchool? Is that what you mean? No, the plug-in on PowerSchool is just the, is just the scheduling software. Oh, okay. So we need a scheduling software to be able to tell the students where they're, yeah, going, they're going or else they're going to be all over the school, right? They so be, they'll, yeah. they'll have access to They'll have an email to them and they're going to say, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you need to go to these places. Okay. Um, if you don't want to, you need to talk to your mentor and get this set. Um, so but teachers don't need the extra... Yeah, what would, so what teachers would, would have the opportunity if they wish, and I know a lot of teachers we've been talking about this are excited, to be able to offer a certain enrichment. So... Um, for example, Mr. Redmond could say, you know, on this, on Wednesday, I'm going to be offering a group on how to change your tire, so, uh, you know, a life skill or something, or something like that. Yep. Um, it's also a time that um, the counselors will be able to pull groups of students to be able to help with college and career planning or yep. do uh, some social emotional groups in regards to that. Okay. Um, so I've heard of this before. Yeah. Okay. There's actually in the in the drive. There's a seven page. Uh, backup advisory about the win advisory that they, they looked at that they created. I think that's the, the product of what you did last year. Yes. Yeah. Yep, so that was written and submitted last spring. Okay. So some of the terminology might be a little bit different just because we've been moving on a little bit. Um, but yes, that was submitted last spring. No, that seems like a much more effective use of the advisory. Yeah. Also, my next question is, with there only being five classes a day, 
I think in some respects it limits the kids as to how many APs they can take. And I know for a lot of other districts, um, students can take more APs and it allows for them to in some respects like take away an entire year of college. What was the rationale for not changing the number of classes being offered? Was it because of staffing? It wasn't because of staffing. So when we sat down um, to do this group, and again, when it started in 2019, um, mm -hmm. we went through and we said, let's not have the budget in your head. Let's not have the staffing in your head. If it was a mm -hmm. perfect world, what would it be? Let's not even think about staff that we're sharing with the middle school and the high school would be the perfect, perfect thing. So we had a full PD day with all of the high school teachers um, and researched different types of um, schedules, whether that was a seven period schedule or a waterfall, waterfall or anything like that. Um, and we also sent a survey out to, and again, this is 2019, so I'm trying to remember, I a survey was, out to- I think I was on the all building <laughs> committee. At that time. The, the school council. The school yeah. council. We sent out a survey to all the students in their current Tiger Talk, what they had. And when we were looking at it, all the students and the staff was coming with, we don't want it to be any longer and we don't want it to be any shorter. That's around the right time. And when we were, if we were looking at it, and if we added, a, if we switched to having more periods in the day or the waterfall, in theory, the time would be a little bit shorter. And a lot of people were saying that they didn't want that shorter, especially with the, the world languages and the, um, the science courses with the labs, they didn't want that shorter block. Um, so when we compiled all that data, it was, we really like this tiger talk, but something's missing. We need something else in the day for those, for those students. Okay. I think the overarching theme that we say, you know, having been through multiple uh, schedule changes in the past, there's, there's no perfect schedule, because if there were, everyone would have it. Um, you need to look at the context, you need to look at your budget, your staffing pattern, and the needs of your community, I and mean, what the desire of the community is. So um, I'm appreciative that you reflected the work that the teachers put into that. I think that's important. Um, that's all Agreed. we have on that. So we, they will be back again in January for a formal presentation and a full school committee adoption to approve a, a new schedule, and we'll go from there. Excellent. That's it. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Woodluck, are you all set? I'm good there. Okay. Move on to new business. Want to be the upcoming meetings? I'm sorry. I know. I, I put that slide in all the time. It throws the whole flow of the meeting. I apologize. Oh. <laughs> Just the upcoming meetings. I didn't even know what was that. It's not on my agenda. Just so we know, uh, next school committee meeting is September 20th. We have a school building committee that week as well, the 21st. Um, October 4th, um, TES will be here. The 20th, TMS will be here. And then the 18th. Those are the upcoming meetings we have right now. So now we can jump out to new business. Yeah. For the and third time. Can I make a suggestion, Dr. Flanagan? <laughs> yes. Can we move this slide to the beginning of the presentation? We, could. we definitely can. <laughs> <laughs> we should do something with it. Yeah. We've been stumbling it, on it, it for about two months we now. So it. That's on me. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Number nine, new business. I knew we'd get here. School opening update? Yes, so uh, Mr. Ogden. Yes, so um, again, thank you. It's been a great start to the school year, and I think there's no better way to hear about that than from a group of our seniors. Um, they are all actually the current class officers, but the election's tomorrow, so um, up for the election tomorrow, so I was able to get them tonight, though, so yeah. So uh, yeah, I'm more than happy to introduce them, and they'll step up, and I'll take it over from there. Today's election day. Yeah, today is. Not tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you. If I could ask you all to introduce yourselves, do you want to start? Um, I'll start. My name is Muhammad Ali Laney. I'm the class treasurer. Uh, my name is Jack Gramer, and I'm co secretary. My name is Alex Nogler, and I'm class president. My name is June Hooley, and I'm co secretary. Hi, I'm Janelle Cody, and I'm vice president. Well, thank you guys for all being here. And you can start. Please. So the first week of school was very eventful as we were all back kind of like back to normal. Many students attended the block party by the bridge um, the few days prior to school opening and uh, the senior class actually raised over a thousand dollars fundraising there. On the first day of school the senior um, seniors gathered on the turf for senior sunrise where they were able to watch the sunrise with their friends on their last first day of school. And then later on that day, class meetings took place. So each class met individually where Mr. Ogden, Mrs. Trainer, and Ms. Palumbo gave a presentation. And they just summarized the core values, expectations, and guidelines, and just fun events that will be happening throughout the school year. Um, tomorrow, class officer elections take place. And homecoming preparation will start the next day. Thank you. 
So the Wednesday before school began, we had a freshman orientation. This is when senior sidekicks help guide freshmen and take them on a tour of the high school. Also during this event, there was an informational session where students, um, seniors talked about many things, including clubs they could join, activities, and homecoming. And then we ended this event with a fun trivia game, and then we gave out snacks. So the beginning of the college application process, so seniors are now starting their college application processes and senior meetings um, can be scheduled with the guidance counselors with the help of Mrs. Hardigan. College representatives will be visiting until November where students can get a better understanding of the experiences at different schools. The ACTs are taking place September 10th and October 22nd and the SATs will be on October 1st. All right, looking at athletics, um, many sports have already began and are in full swing. Um, for example, cross country has started since the summer, summer running. Um, they had their first scrimmage Friday in Martha's Vineyard, and their first meet is tomorrow against Quabbin at home. Um, soccer also has been in full swing since the summer. Um, football and cheer have the first game Saturday in Uxbridge, and previously football had a scrimmage against the Greater Level Tech, and they also had a scrimmage versus Newburyport. Field hockey also had their first game today. They took the win against Fitchburg, I believe. And we're very excited for October 8th to show our school spirit in the homecoming games. And then going off of um, homecoming, that's going to be in a few weeks' time. And I think we're going to be start, we're gonna start planning that on Thursday, if we're all reelected. Um, <laughs> 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 we'll be able to start planning for that. Um, you, I don't know if you can see the images, but those are some pictures from last year's homecoming. And then the bottom right is graduation. So I think a big thing um, at Tingsboro High is our like school spirit. We have a lot of fun, and I think we're going to do a great job again this year. And then graduation, um, beginning of June, and I think we got a lot of like we got a lot of stuff planned and a lot of good stuff coming. Friendly. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. I will <coughs> open it up to the committee. If anyone has any questions or anything. It's a tough crowd. I have questions. We're not letting them off that easy. No. <laughs> you can't I always ask the, the questions. Yeah, yeah, if you're ready. Go I ahead. always ask questions. Yeah. Is there anything that we could do that would help you? Not at this no. moment. <laughs> Pretty good. Thank you, though. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you have any ideas yet for your senior week, or have you started to think about that, or is that under wraps? Um, I know we've talked about a few things with Mr. Richall, our class advisor. We've just been throwing around ideas. We have, depending on how much we decide to spend on prom, we do have a little bit. We should have a good amount left over for whether we want to tour Fenway, do a Spirit of Boston cruise for yearbook signing, just things like that that we've like thrown around. But mm -hmm. nothing's really set in stone yet. I think we're going to wait till after elections to start really planning right. things. <laughs> Where is prom going to be this year? Um, it's at Castleton. Castleton is in Wyndham, right? Okay. So, I, if I can ask my question, we, we talk a lot about being college and career ready and preparing you for life beyond the, the walls here at Tingsboro High School. How do you feel about that? Do you feel as though you're ready to, to, to move on? I know you have another year. Do you feel prepared to take all the necessary steps this year to position yourself to do what you want to do moving beyond Tingsboro High School? Definitely. I think um, especially with the classes that I took last year, I was in the um, AP line class and that definitely helped me a lot with my college essay and writing and um, research and all that kind of stuff. And then this year I'm taking the writing research class with Mr. Redman mm -hmm. and that also, I, we's only, we've only been in it for a week and I feel like it's already helping. Really? Yeah. yeah, I agree. A lot of these classes have like built in college prep where they'll get us set up with Naviance and things like that, writer college essays in AP Lang, for example, where they just, those little things help us a lot in getting ready both mentally and actually ready for college, which is great. Awesome. So I'm gonna embarrass one of you, I don't mean to, but I know you all do great things, but I received an email the other day from one of your teachers talking about uh, your experience with Life is Good and Road Trip Nation. So June, can you tell us a little bit, you're actually featured on the Life is Good homepage right now, your story, is that correct? I am, yes. So tell us a little bit about that, and tell us about Road Trip Nation a little bit, if you don't yeah, mind. Yeah, so it's like my favorite class right now. But I took it last year, and 
So she told us, she's like, reach for the stars. And I was like, okay. And then, so the brand Life is Good, um, I reached out to them because I was really interested about like how they, they came about. And like, um, so it was about these two brothers who like, they just love, they're very optimistic throughout their lives and they wanted to start like a t-shirt company. And then they were like, oh, like we're always optimistic. So then like, oh, life is good. So, um, I was like, that's like perfect. So then throughout my life, I had like many adversities. So then I was like, okay. And I've always stayed optimistic. So when I was in the class, I was like, this is perfect. And then I wrote an email to them. And then he, he like emailed me back. And then I had a phone call with them. And then they said to like, um, they invited me to the headquarters too. So then I took a tour and then we did a, like we, I had an interview with him and then we chatted, but yeah, that's pretty much it. That's pretty cool. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> and uh, just for the record, who's the teacher? Um, Mrs. Times. Mm -hmm. so. Thank you. I'll actually share that link with the committee after the meeting so you can all see. Uh, yes, please. See it on the homepage there. I know I'm trying to find it. I can't find it. Yeah. <laughs> right, any other comments or questions from the board? I know it's not easy to come in here and sit up there and read things and chat with us. It's, I know not millions of people are home watching. <laughs> <laughs> we get ratings like the Super Bowl, so you guys are going to be very well known after this. But, uh, but thank you all for coming out. Enjoy your senior year. So much. Enjoy thank every you. minute of it. Be Have careful. Fun. Be smart. Apply to everything. And the only other thing I would say is there are so many scholarships every year. Yes. That do not get awarded. Yep. Nobody applies for them. Do your homework. Do your homework. Apply for everything. Your parents will appreciate it, I <laughs> promise you. Um, but definitely. So thank you very, very much for coming out this evening. Thank you for having thank us. Thank you for having us. Great job. Great job, everyone. And then we're going to bring Mr. Ogden back up at this time, I believe. We are. So, Mr. Chair, as you know, every year, uh, well, I take that back, not every year. <laughs> not the past couple of years. Yes. Uh, historically, historically, uh, Tingsboro High School has offered a, uh, an overnight trip to give kids the world a uh, phenomenal experience, I can say, as a dad uh, whose daughter went her senior year. Uh, same here, right? Mine so, too. Uh, so Mr. Ogden is, is here again tonight seeking permission to, uh, to go with that trip. So, Mr. Ogden, some details? Yes. Uh, yeah, so once again, I'm looking for a prelimi preliminary approval for this trip. Um, the dates, are, and a lot of the things are not set because I'm, I'm working on that. Um, but the, de the and it de deter is determined by the hours that Give Kids the World can give us. So um, it'll, I'm looking for, it'll be six days, five nights, um, either the one of the last weeks of November or one of the first weeks of December. Again, it depends on the availability that Give Kids the World has. Um, we do, most kids would do over 20 plus hours during the time that they are there to volunteer. Um, Mr. Rogan, do you mind just backing up and doing an overview of what Give Kids the World and what the experience yep. is? I think a lot of us know, but some of us don't know. Absolutely. If anyone at home doesn't know, let's just provide that overview. Yep. Uh, so Give Kids the World is located um, in Kissimmee, Florida, just outside Orlando. Um, it is, they are affiliated with Make-A-Wish, so any child that has a Make-A-Wish granted, they go and they stay there. Um, it is run on 75% volunteers. Uh, I have, have had the opportunity to go uh, three times. Um, as a school, I believe we went five or six times total over that time. Um, every year that we go, it's one of the most rewarding experiences. Kids are blown away by it, um, and it, it really shows you the power of giving back. Um, and, and I think it's a tremendous opportunity for our kids that, that we do that when we do go. Um, so again, this year, that is what we will be looking for to be able to go take the time to go down on that trip. Um, pricing the last few years, we've been able to keep it around fifteen hundred dollars or so. Um, a, a student, I'd like to stay in that range. Obviously, costs have increased with things, particularly flights. So I'm, I'm currently working with a travel agent on, on that. So I'd like to keep it around there again, like I said. But that would include uh, hotel, flight, um, vans, and we usually do a day at a theme park as well. And in fairness, historically, I, I have to do give some uh, some kudos here because Mr. Woodlock actually was the one who initiated this trip when he was the principal here eight or nine years ago, I believe. So. Um, it, it's a great experience for our kids, and a lot of kids over the years have really learned a lot and taken a lot of valuable lessons from that. So, 
So at this time, I will entertain a motion to approve the overnight trip for Give Kids the World. I'll make that motion. Second. Any conversation? Can I ask a question? Of course. Okay. Um, if it's at the end of November and beginning of December, would it impact the winter sports seasons in any way for those it, athletes? It possibly could. Um, in the past, it has, but coaches have been willing to work with, with the players. Okay. And do you have any idea of how many spots? Because I know in years past you've offered two different trips, and I know it's really more reliant on what they give you. Yeah, so it is on that. So right now I've only reached out then for the one trip of 20, um, but where we haven't had it for a few years, it'd probably open it up to seniors first to give them the choice because I'd like to continue this for as long as I'm principal here. So, um, and if we get to go back to two trips eventually, that'd be great. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd extend it to seniors first. Okay. When details are ironed out, if we can get that information back Absolutely. to me, I think that'd be great. Yeah, please. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? That carries. And thank you for doing this trip. Yes, yes. thank no, you. No, thank you. Great. My, my daughter still talks about it. It was one of, mine. one of her greatest high school experiences, actually. So, which is cool. Great. So, idea. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ogden. Should we go to number nine, new business? No. We'll move on to <laughs> ten. <laughs> are we going to talk about when the next school committee meetings are? What's that? Can we talk about when the next school committee meetings are? Yes, please. Go back to that slide. <laughs> number nine was so much fun. Yes. <laughs> sure how I can follow up with that. Uh, for finance tonight, Mr. Tenderella, uh, signing of bills. There were five bill warrants presented to the committee. I do have them back all approved. In your drive are the list of warrant numbers, accounts, and amounts. Uh, no signing of payroll tonight. We'll take care of that at your next meeting. And nothing tonight from me under other. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Um, school committee discussion. We'll start with Nate. Anything? Done? I think at this time, thank you. All right. Yeah. Just. Welcome back to everyone. We're so happy that to hear it's been going very, very well. I'm just hearing from our seniors as well. And what struck me was the comment of we're back to normal. And that was really, really nice to hear and you know, see that we're we're living back to normal. Yes. Thank you. I'm just excited that it does seem like there's returning to more normal activities for the students, seeing them here, seeing them happy seeing them feeling like they're getting adjusted and making the positive changes they need to be making as they transition into being like seniors and graduating eventually. Excellent. Mr. I'm good, thank you. I'm all set tonight, thank you. Well, I have to um, thank profusely um, Ms. Gill. Um, yes. Uh, and congratulate her on her retirement. Uh, I. I it would be difficult for me to say that I've ever met somebody who is uh, kinder, um, um, uh, been more helpful, uh, friendlier, uh, a person to, uh, especially in the position that, you know, manning that front desk at the elementary school for so many years and doing it so incredibly well. Um, uh, she's helped so many families over the year. And, uh, you know, she's given everything she's had, you know, professionally to our, to our district. And I just want to thank her very much for all of her years of experience. And, uh, again, congratulate her and wish her the best of luck. I'm going to have to go over there and say hi to her. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm glad everyone's back. I wish them all well. I hope everyone has a wonderful year this year. Uh, again, like uh, Jeff brought up, the back to normal. Boy, does this feel like a normal year. It feels great. And uh, I, I want to thank everyone for their help in making that happen. Thank you. I'm going to just parrot a little bit what Mr. Mullen just said about Mrs. Gill. I teared up a little bit when I heard about her resignation. I've been volunteering at that school library for the better part of the last, I mean, with the exception of COVID, but all last year and before that. And just her face at that desk and chatting with her every day. I just, I wish her the best of luck and congratulations on a very well-earned retirement. Thank you. I want to thank uh, Mr. Ogden and Ms. Trainer. The students came out tonight, as always. Um, I think it's one of the best meetings of the night. When I was first on the committee, we used to do all three updates in the one meeting, and I still love the space that I would give them the time. Um, 
Miss Gill actually was a bus driver before she was in the office, and my wife would probably kill me for telling this story. Well, my <laughs> wife was a little girl. She had Miss Gill as a bus driver, and she named her little dolly Miss Gill. Aww. So uh, my, my, my wife's family has a long history with Miss Gill, and I wish her all the best. Because your wife is only 22 years old, right? <laughs> she, so it was only a couple of years ago she was the bus driver for your, for your wife. She's 29. <laughs> um, boy, that's a tough one to top. Uh, <clears throat> so, you know, it's, just, it's great to be back. It's great to have the students back. Um, I think the, the schools are, are ironing out all the kinks right now, and I think uh, we're up and running, and uh, it's, it's, it's certainly exciting to, to, to not... We, we don't say go back to normal because... We're going to take the, 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 the best of what we got from, from COVID, and we're getting better and we're improving. So we're, we're moving forward with all of our experiences to get better every day. So uh, it, we're truly happy to be back and uh, excited about uh, where we're going. Excellent. Thank you. And uh, I'll echo. Glad everybody's back, seeing the kids out on the fields again, and, and everything is great. Um, reminder to everyone that's going to start getting dark early and there's kids at bus stops so please be careful in the morning especially on these rainy days we've had recently congratulations to miss gill um with my wife and i have known her for years and good luck to her and her retirement we do have no need for an executive session so at this time i will entertain a motion to adjourn i'll make that motion okay any conversation all those in favor aye, aye. aye. opposed abstain that carries good night and thank you